We're here with Kai Jones at the uh, NBA Global Academy in Treviso. Kai, a um, little bit of a coming out party for you here at this camp. Um, how are you feeling here so far? I uh, feel great. It's a great experience. Nice playing with these guys and it's fun to play hard. And I've never been to Europe before, so it's great to be here. It's awesome. What was your reaction when you learned that you're invited to this camp and, and what does this weekend represent for you? Well, I was really excited and I feel like it's a chance for me to showcase my skills and show what I've been working on all year. Uh, just trusting my work and showing how much I developed from the past year. So I was really excited. Tell us a little bit about your background, uh, where are you from, when did you start playing, that kind of thing. Well, I was born and raised in Nassau, Bahamas. Um, I started playing around the age of 12, just in rec leagues and in little city leagues. And I didn't start taking it seriously until about 15 years old. I grew to six foot six and my dad was like, man, you should play basketball because track was my main sport. Started playing basketball at 15, trained, spent a year in the Bahamas and then came over to OCP for my 12th grade year and played there. And then I'm going to do a post-grad year booster. But yeah, my, that's basically my background. I heard that um, you were invited to the BWB last year, but kind of they found you in like a little bit of a funny way, they told me. Can you tell us that, about that story? Uh, basketball without borders, yeah. Um, so my coach, nobody in the Bahamas knew about me because I was in the States for like five years from seventh grade to 10th grade. So I was there running track and nobody knew about me as a basketball player. Grew to 6'6 six, six, at 15, then at 16, I was 6'9. <laughs> So I was trying out for the boys' junior national team because somebody was like, hey, man, you should try out. And one of the VP, VPs of the FIBA, uh, Federal uh, International Basketball Association, came into one of our tryouts and practices, saw me playing, and he was like, man, this kid's got good size, moves really well. So he was like, I think you should come to this camp. And I almost didn't go because I was going to go um, back to Florida to start training, getting ready for OCP. And that's how they found out about me. It's, a, it's crazy. We saw kind of both sides of the coin, uh, you know, yesterday, you, you know, it's a little bit of a weaker competition and you really showed a very versatile game on both ends of the floor. Today was a little bit of a tougher game and, you know, uh, you weren't quite as productive. You know, tell us about where you're at right now in terms of your development and, you know, um, wh wh where do you see yourself going? Uh, just, I always try to stay even keel, you know, not worry about the highs or the lows. So good things happen, you stay even, bad things happen, it's fine, you just keep going. Uh, today was obviously a tougher game, I uh, just have to get back into my groove, and tomorrow I'll be back at it harder, but in my stage of development, I feel like I'm still growing and learning, still putting all the pieces of the puzzle together, so just figuring out when to attack, when to not attack, and defensively getting more aware and rebounding the ball and just getting stronger, so I'm working on that constantly. When you're at your best and having really good games, what are some of the things that you're doing out there? You know, rebounding the ball really well, blocking a lot of shots, and when my jumper's hitting, it feels really good, and just playing above the rim. So that's what it looks like, just domination, just trying to score in all facets of the game. Any players that you really enjoy watching play in the NBA or in college? Uh, in the NBA, obviously Giannis. I'm a big fan of his. I love the way he attacks relentlessly. And he's another player who stays even keel. He may have a bad game and just blocks it out and goes harder the next time. Also, Kevin Durant. I love his versatility, his skill. I feel like he's the best scorer to ever play the game. And just how he, many ways he can score the basketball is just fascinating to me. And also, of course, LeBron James, the most dominant player in my mind ever. Uh, after Shaquille O'Neal, just how strong he is, how great of a player he is. And in college, I like Mo Bamba. It's fun to watch, entertaining. Marvin Bagley and DeAndre Ayton, of course, because from the Bahamas, so he's awesome, he's a great player. So those are some guys I try to watch and emulate my game after. So you mentioned DeAndre, he's you know, potentially number one pick in the draft. We had Buddy Heald a few years ago, top five pick. Um, you know, what is it about the Bahamas now is producing you know, so many you know, talented young guys? Uh, I just feel that basketball is growing there more and more and kids are getting a lot more exposure because they're starting to figure out the system. Before it wasn't as much, like my grandfather, for example, was 7'1", never touched the basketball in his life, my great-grandfather. So it's just more exposures coming to the game in the Bahamas and it's growing, especially with things like Basketball Without Borders. It's helping to get exposure for our, our Bahamian kids, so it's awesome. I've been told that um, academics are a, a, a big focal point for you and that you might even have a chance to be an Ivy League like, level student. I mean, how do you, tell me a little bit more about that and, and how do you find the balance between sports and studies? Well, obviously, for me, school comes first, and I try to do well in everything. 
uh, on and off the court. So I'm really competitive, so I just try to do my best in the classroom and try to be the best in the classroom. So academics are really important to me, and I take my studies seriously, and I really want to study business and become an investment broker. That's one of the goals of mine. But, yeah, education is really big for me. Is playing in the NBA, is that a realistic goal for you down the road? Yes, sir, of course. It really is. <clears throat> When did you first realize that that might be an option for you? Uh, when I was 15 years old. And I, my dad was like, uh, you should probably start playing basketball. You're 6'6", six, six, 15, and you're kind of athletic. So I was like, man, I really could do something with this. Is it weird that you've been in the U.S. playing, you know, not getting that much attention, and you have to come all the way to Italy, you know, for people in the U.S. to kind of say, wow, you know? I mean, a lot of people were hitting me last night saying, who is this guy? I mean, is that, is that a little bit strange? It is kind of funny, but I mean, I got a little bit of attention in the U.S., started building up a little bit of buzz with the first session and some of the prelims like in Atlanta and some of those games. But it is funny. You, some, but I, you read in the Bible, prophets don't become prophets in their own home. They got to travel. So, you know. Great stuff, man. Thanks so much. Yes, sir. Thank you.